So this is our business management capstone presentation. Our group is Action Captured Videography. That is with Aaron Catanzaro, Alexandra Collier, and Cody Chase. Our first slide is focusing on our annual total revenues and just, you know, how we worked on increasing those. We use the strategies of using, you know, increasing our market share as well as our advertising. I know we took a big focus on that and finding our own niche and doing things differently than we thought the other companies were. Our earnings per share, we tried to focus on increasing those with increasing margins and then stock repurchase as well. And then our return on equity. Again, we used a lot of stock repurchase, increasing margins, tried to avoid selling stock. I know we had talked a lot about taking unnecessary loans. We definitely wanted to stay away from that altogether. Our credit ratings, um, we, where they are, Uh, pretty comfortable with our rating that we have. And then as far as our end stock price. So, sorry. We're um, pretty happy with that. Uh, our image rating, I see up probably about points. Take a little step down in our 14th year. And then our strategic vision, definitely to be the world's largest and most. I think she lost connection there. Um, give her a second to hop back on. Let's see. I'm sorry, did that just disconnect me? It did. Could you? Start? I'm so sorry. I have no <laughs> idea what's happening. That is all right. Uh, I'm sorry. Right from the top. We, we want to maintain at least 51% um, market share, and we're working on perfecting our component formula as well as advertising um, and compensation and facilities formula. You know, we don't want to have more than we need, but we definitely want to have enough that we're producing what we need. And then look at increasing our social responsibility and corporate citizenship as well. Our future performance targets. So we look to increase our earnings per share 10% each year, doing so through stock buybacks, increasing prices with the market, and then kind of finding our Goldilocks zone, you know, not too hot, not too cold, just right. And then our return on equity. We look to increase the return on equity by 10% each year as well with the same strategies. Our future performance targets continued. We want to maintain our credit rating as it stands, as I had said. And again, raising our image rating through social responsibility, corporate citizenship, ethical pricing, and quality as well. And then for our stock prices... We want to increase 5 to 10% per year through stock buybacks, increasing market share, and increasing our other metrics, earnings per shares, return on equity, et cetera. All righty. So let's talk a little bit about our AC uh, camera strategy. So we use the cameras as kind of like our cash cow of developing drones, um, adding more cash towards the drones and helping um, with that. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, quality uh, increased kind of too fast when we first started. Um, we were seeing that everything was moving a little too quickly um, for the market. Um, also, uh, our price um, was not keeping up with the cost. Um, we, 
we were pretty far off definitely at the beginning. Um, but moving on, we pretty much had to decrease the quality slightly. And then that allowed us to get back um, to a real competitive balance um, for the AC cameras with the rest of the market. And then uh, UV, uh, UAV drone strategy. Uh, initially, we uh, did a lot of R&D. We felt like that was going to be the most important thing uh, moving forward. Um, it was pretty much our main focus, especially since it's like a new technology. Uh, drones, cameras have been around for a long time. Drones are kind of newer in the market. So we thought, you know, let's do a lot of R&D to uh, develop these drones. Um, we had a, uh, first off, we did like a higher quality, higher cost. Um, it seemed to be working pretty well, um, at the beginning and kind of th through the years, it kind of slowed down, um, to where we decided to do, uh, quality first, uh, and then we made it into, the closer to the average with everybody else in the market. Um, we decreased the quality as well to make our margins a lot better. And it seemed to be helping with our, um, in the market. Then finally we struck a competitive balance as long, uh, along with our cameras to, uh, basically be on top of the market. So looking at our production strategy, um, first of all, with our I mean, enormous market share, I know several years we were in the mid 40% range. Um, we had to increase our manufacturing capacity every year to keep up. Uh, we ended up not going to robotics. Looking back, it could have been a good idea or probably was a good idea. Um, Although by the time we did look at it, look at it, um, we had so many camera and drone spaces that it was really just kind of out of the question. Um, ending in year 14, we had 720 camera manufacturing spaces and 240 drone manufacturing spaces. As far as our workforce compensation goes, um, our strategy relied uh, on really getting as much production uh, as we could. And so we really focused on training. We were absolutely maxed out on training um, for cameras and drones up until year 12, um, when we realized that we had been behind the industry average on other workforce compensations. So we did increase um, everything from uh, salaries to bonuses to uh, quality incentives across the board. Uh, we upped everything. And luckily, well, fortunately, I should say, because up until then, we had put so much effort into creating such a strong company, we were able to more or less close that gap within a single year and still perform excellently. As far as overtime goes, uh, we always tried to uh, build as many uh, capacity uh, manufacturing stations so that it would not be needed. Although with our strategy, we actually underestimated what we would do. And we ended up overperforming in years six, eight, and 11. And there was need for overtime in those years. Our finance strategy, as far as stocks are concerned, um, in year six, we sold 2 million shares to finance our initial research and development and our big changes to get us started in the right direction where we were wanting to go. Um, the very next year, because of such great earnings and um, such, uh, we had, uh, <laughs> we were doing so well by year seven that we actually started repurchasing those shares. Um, by year 10, we had returned to the original 20 million shares that we started with. And after then, after that, we just 
kept buying them back. As far as dividends go, we, we do not offer dividends to our investors as of right now. Um, we feel that with our par- current position, uh, we, we don't have to. They're all already making, you know, buckets of money um, just, just owning the stock. As far as loans go, we have not encountered a need for any loans from the start of this simulation. Um, we haven't taken a loan. We haven't been close to taking a loan. Uh, the only the only situation in which we, we might take a loan would be to upgrade our workstations to be robotic. Our closest competitor in the camera segment as of year 14 was Company D. And that's m- mostly due to just having a, adopting a similar strategy as us. Um, previous to this, they were hanging out with companies B and C. Um, although over the past few years, they have been reevaluating and um, taking after us, should I say. Our closest competitor in the drone segment is Company C. Um, the one thing that really stands out about their drones is just kind of an, an enormous amount of retailer recruitment per drone. With that being said, we are still spending much, much more um, because our demand is so much higher. Uh, they're able to spend more per drone just because their demand is not as much. As far as company D is concerned, who we feel is right now our closest competitor, um, we don't have any off- offensive strategies. We're just going to continue with what we are doing uh, we're doing fantastically, and right now, with as far ahead as we are with research and development, um, manufacturing capacity, they would have to spend fortune to even get close to us. Um, it's just they're too far behind, and I even put together a little visual for you guys, um, our company versus company D. So... That should give you an idea of what we what we do here. As far as what we learned during the simulation is definitely differentiate yourself from your competitors. You want to stake your claim in the market. And when you're all alone, you're basically unhindered. Uh, of course, the best part about being unhindered is you're playing your own game and you always win your own game. So that's why it's very important to find your niche and um, course better the niche more lucrative the niche the better i suppose as far as research and development our initial during the initial years uh we were working with pretty pretty small margins um which did worry us a bit but you know we all agreed that we were playing the long game here and it did pay off many times we we saw you know returns greater than we could imagine. I think uh, I think we hit our first billion dollar year in either year 11 or 12. I might I might be wrong about that, but it absolutely helps. And the same goes um, for compensation training. We maxed out all training costs every single year. Absolutely improves productivity. Uh, one thing that we did learn is don't disregard the annual raises or the bonuses or quality incentives because those do matter a ton. During the first few years, um, we were kind of lazy in our pricing. We priced the cameras to the 50th dollar, you know, we'd sell them for 200 or 250 or 300. Uh, Same with the drones, it would be 1100, 1200, 1300. Um, After a couple of years, we started pricing them to the dollar uh, right below where our projected market share would decrease. And of course it's a projection, so it's not always accurate, but I would, I would say um, it consistently, uh, consistently brought up our, our revenue by at least a couple percent and also our profits. So 